The Big Bang. The story of everything. Time. The universe. Us. The Big Bang, one, has a cool name, and two, it's the history of our universe. This is it. It's all of us. It's all things. That's the traditional view. But is it right? More and more, scientists aren't sure. In the old, outdated Big Bang Theory, our universe just popped into existence from nothing. We talk about it as the beginning of the universe, but what it really is is the end of our understanding. Astronomers are ripping up the old rules, but that creates new problems. How can we possibly say that the universe expanded faster than the speed of light? But are they asking questions with no answers? What was the origin? Is there even a sense to asking was there a time before time? We don't know. We got nothing, folks. Well, we got some things, but it's tough. It's tough. It doesn't tell us what happened really at the beginning. This is still an absolute puzzle. So just how did it all start? The Big Bang Theory is a good story, but is it true? To begin, at the beginning, no space, no time. Everything in the observable universe compressed into a dot smaller than an atom. Suddenly, out of this, the universe expands. Stars and galaxies form, creating the cosmos we see today. The story of our universe starts with the Big Bang, or does it? So the Big Bang is the observed truth, but there are details that haven't been quite worked out. There are a lot of things that may have happened. It's just one explanation. Science isn't about being right all the time. It's about being wrong. And we could absolutely be wrong about a major component in our understanding of the universe. We're putting one of science's greatest stories to the test. The Big Bang sure sounds like an explosion, but was it? An explosion is a sudden release of energy from one point, usually generating light, heat, pressure, and a bang. But did the Big Bang even explode? When you hear the term bang, you think of a noise, but you have to realize that it's sound waves propagating through air. So after the Big Bang, there's no air. There was no air, there's no way to hear anything. So in that sense, it was silent. So the Big Bang didn't bang. But to make the universe, it must have pushed out stuff. Lots of stuff. Every explosion has an ignition point. But what about the Big Bang? So if you were to only think of the Big Bang as an explosion, you would very rightly ask, well, where's the center of that explosion? Where is the center of the universe? There was no central point. There's nowhere in the sky you can point and say that's where the Big Bang was. The Big Bang is everything. The Big Bang happened here, where I'm sitting. The Big Bang happened on the other side of the planet. The Big Bang happened in the Andromeda Galaxy. The Big Bang occurred throughout the universe simultaneously. During an explosion, like a bomb or a grenade, debris fires out from a center. This debris spreads out unevenly, different sized pieces landing at different distances from the blast center. But did the Big Bang shoot material out in this explosive manner? For clues, we need to search the night sky. One of the things that's really very striking about the universe when you simply take a telescope and start looking in different directions is that it, roughly speaking, looks the same in all directions. Although the universe is peppered with individual galaxies and galaxy clusters, the big picture is what astronomers call 
homogeneous. When we say the universe is homogeneous, it means it's almost exactly the same on very large scales with very, very little differences. It's perfectly smooth. If we believe the classic Big Bang story, the same amount of material was shot out over the same distance in all directions. Our smooth, homogeneous universe doesn't appear to be the result of what we know as an explosion. It wasn't big, and it wasn't a bang. The Big Bang was not an explosion like a grenade or a bomb or dynamite where there is material rushing out from a common center. It's not like there's a ring of galaxies that came out from some explosion. A firecracker explosion is triggered by a fuse. So what set off the Big Bang? What I would say is there's no such thing as what triggered the Big Bang. You know, we tend to think when something happens, when there's an effect, there was a cause, right? There was something that made it happen. But here we're talking about the whole universe. There's nothing outside the universe to bring it into existence. The science is clear. The universe didn't start with an explosion. If there was no bang, how did everything start so small and get so big? The young universe we do understand. And the old contemporary universe we also understand. We've stitched together this story where we don't fully understand the first few paragraphs of the story, but we know the rest of the book. How can we get to the bottom of the Big Bang story when we can't read the first page of the book? The only hope we have is to search back in time line by line. One of the amazing things about being a cosmologist is that telescopes are time machines. It takes a while for light to get here, so if we look farther out into space, we're really looking back into the history of the universe, and that's amazing. The first clues to unraveling the Big Bang mystery came with the introduction of advanced telescopes in the 1920s. Edwin Hubble was studying the light coming from distant galaxies. And what he realized was the more distant a galaxy was, the more reddened the light was. Why should that be? Well, it turns out that light reddens if a galaxy is moving away from us. It's called the red shift. So what he discovered was pretty much every galaxy in the sky was moving directly away from the Milky Way. Hubble's discovery completely changed our way of understanding the universe. Prior to Edwin Hubble's observations of redshifted galaxies, people thought that the universe was static, that it had always been, and there was no beginning, and it wasn't changing. That's very, very different than the picture of the universe we have now, which is a very dynamic place. Can you imagine sitting there in that cold observing seat at Mount Wilson Observatory, realizing you've discovered something incredibly profound? The universe is changing, it's expanding, and somehow we seem to be at the middle of it all. To make his breakthrough, Hubble used what was at the time the world's largest optical instrument, the 100-inch Hooker Telescope. With this device, he was able to prove the universe extended beyond the boundaries of the Milky Way. We finally realized we were not the center of everything. Why would we be in the center of everything? What really was the key to the puzzle is that if space and time expands in every direction at once, then everything gets farther away from everything else. Wherever you are in the universe, it looks like you're the center of expansion. This was truly one of science's landmark moments. Hubble had proved one of the basic principles of the Big Bang story. Our universe is continuously expanding. There was only one conclusion to draw. If you extrapolate that back in time, it looks like everything was coming from one point at one time. That's the Big Bang. Hubble's discovery grabbed the headlines, but the idea of an expanding universe had been proposed two years earlier by a Belgian priest and physicist. The real idea of the Big Bang comes from Georges Lemaitre. He realized that if you ran time backwards, Back to the beginning of time, maybe everything coalesced into a single atom, the primeval atom. 
Lemaitre believed the infant universe was extremely small and dense, squeezed into a single point. The primeval atom. Later, scientists would define this point as an infinite entity called a singularity. But there's a problem. The singularity and the laws of physics don't mix. It may be one infinitely small point, but it causes some impossibly big problems.